a crisis of leadership. We've been talking about this all week. But what if there was some sort of outer space crisis? An alien invasion sounds crazy, perhaps, to all this. I'm a big fan of the original Star Trek series, and it was only when, uh, you know, there were alien civilizations that seemed to uh, challenge the Earth that you found that the Earth got its act together for the kind of global governance that all the, uh, you know, all the visionaries say we need that if we're going to deal with climate change, if we're going to deal with all the, uh, all the modern issues, global finance, where the, our, our, the sovereignty of individual nations is actually a political barrier to solving these big problems. So can Perhaps we need some outside universal threat. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order Presented by Apollo 18. In theaters everywhere September 2nd. Three, two, one. Launch, launch, launch. Ignition. Do we have the capability of attacking an extraterrestrial spacecraft in space? Certainly we can attack it. Guidance is on. That'll be a supersonic. We do have the capability of firing missiles at such a spacecraft. Time to impact, 20 seconds. The question is, what type of weapon do we launch? you can do you do something this government doesn't want they'll plant dope on you they'll find something in your hotel room they will do something and you'll be taken off or like usually if you're a researcher you'll just disappear and no one will know where you are and nobody wants to talk about it I'm saying we better wake up and find out we're in trouble Her little pastime was calling up, supposedly filling the sky with UFOs and watching everybody's excitement. And some of the most outstanding sightings were in the early 70s in Ohio. And she used to laugh about it because she'd be standing in a circle out in the field somewhere calling up demons. And that's all they were, were angels of light playing games in the sky. Remember, a demon... Get the little spooky picture. There are a fallen angel, an unclean spirit. They can assume any form or go into anything. But they can, they can assume forms, including spacemen or solid objects like flying saucers or so on. That's why when they appear on the radar scope and a jet gets up there, they vanish right in front of the palace eye because they're nothing but a spirit.
and then of course their plans to create a mock alien invasion. I have uh, talked briefly on the radio for Prophecy Club about the flying saucers, somebody very high up in the New World Order who was brought to Christ by a close friend of mine has talked about piloting the flying saucers. Yes, the United States government has flying saucers. He considered that the beings that were co-piloting these flying saucers were aliens. And he took a second look and realized these were demons. I could go on. The bottom line is, is I have concluded that there are no good aliens. The aliens are demons, and we've got um, a, a mixture going on of demons and, and flesh and blood, and we've also got other genetic experiments. I'm just giving you a tiny sampling of how sophisticated this programming really is. They've really out, Satan has really outdone himself. And they have a program for infiltrating the churches. And anyone who is a legitimate a Christian minister is going to be singled out and targeted. And anyone who is a legitimate a Christian minister is going to be singled out and targeted. Basically, the consensus of opinion of these guys is there are two kinds of UFOs. There are top secret government craft, and there are satanic manifestations, demonic, okay? Now, I have since come to believe that the extraterrestrial portion of all of this is nonsense, but that the technology is real, is real. I believe that many of us were shown these documents over the years so that later we would talk about it. I mean, how can you keep the existence of extraterrestrials, if they were real, a secret? And how could anyone keep quiet knowing that they had seen documentation, official government documents, labeled top secret, that expressed that these extraterrestrials were real and had visited this earth. I wanted to know just how true all of this was, and I began a program of research to find out if extraterrestrials were real. What I discovered was amazing. What I discovered, ladies and gentlemen, is that there has been a plan in existence since about 1917, and probably before that, to create an artificial extraterrestrial threat to this Earth in order to create a one-world totalitarian socialist government. Experiments have been proposed to test the credibility of an out-of-our-world invasion threat. And it continues on another page. Nevertheless, an effective political substitute for war would require alternate enemies, some of which might seem equally far-fetched in the context of the current war system. It may be, for instance, that gross pollution of the environment can eventually replace the possibility of mass destruction by nuclear weapons as the principal substitute for war. Are you beginning to get the message, folks? I know for a fact that the plan is to make all of us feel totally helpless. That 
what's happening is beyond our realm to affect because we've been taken over by aliens that our independence day is dawning so beware of that understand that those criminals have been keeping information and technology from us under their blanket of national security. They are 25 years ahead of us, at least, technologically. Can you imagine what they've got now? files is the truth is out there the truth is out there I'm gonna paraphrase the truth is in here we are here today to disclose the truth about a subject that has been ridiculed and questioned denied for at least 50 years the men and women who are on this stage and the some 350 additional military intelligence witnesses to the so-called UFO matter and extraterrestrial intelligence can prove and will prove that we are not alone. You know, I got cut off on a radio show that uh, was supposedly people fighting for the truth in this country. The very moment I started talking about mind control, the music came on. You must assess this world with truth. You must be as a child, meaning pre-programming. That's part of what entering heaven as a child means. You have to be honest with yourself about this world. You're told right off the bat you're on earth. How do you know? Why? Because other humans tell you that? They've told you that's where you are? That this is life, the food chain is normal, biology says so. How do you know that? You're trusting everything you've been told. If your instinct, which is valid, tells you that doesn't make sense, you're right. That's what building your house in a rock means. You must know thyself. Satan controls all of academia, all of the media, all of the money, everything you're told. All its symbols are everywhere. The color blue, the color purple, butterflies. Butterflies are the, uh, a huge symbol of Satan. The transformation from what you are into what it wants you to be. So it's subconsciously putting that image of metamorphosis out there. You have sorcery being practiced on you. You have all kinds of control methods you couldn't even comprehend. Those who are in control of the world are anti-Christ. It's obvious. 
they're puppets of Satan. The Antichrist consciousness and control system here was already there back then. The Antichrist or diseased cancerous consciousness is what murdered him then and it has risen since. Understand that. That's what happened. And they can argue it all they want. It's what they do. That's why they argue. That's all they can do is argue. And eventually they can't answer questions anymore. So they just talk over you. Or I love this one. You're crazy. You need some therapy. Generally, the people that run the world will come off as the nice ones. Everything they'll say about their group is always going to be, of course, nice. And anybody who says anything against their group is, of course, insane. The implication is they're insane. And, and the group will always be nice about it. You know, I care about you. You seem to be having some mental problems. You might benefit from some therapy. And you create this fraudulent pseudoscience they call it psychology and you indoctrinate the public into its credibility so that you can draw upon it whenever you are discovered. You witness this all the time whether you know it or not. You see, in the Bible they even tell you, watch out for people who give long extended sermons for praise and their outer persona. It's right in there. But with mind control, people cannot allow themselves to see their primary agenda. They absolutely need, require you to feel responsible for whatever they have done to you. They need you to be ignorant of the extra dimensional influence. Because if you're ignorant of that, you will blame everything on yourself. What they do is make you default the best they can. Make you defy what you normally would do. They do all the shit through you, pervert you, corrupt you, your character, basically. Get all the other characters to hate you if possible. And then use what they've done to and through you against you. Satan isn't stupid. Satan's intellectual strength grows with each new soul that it absorbs. Hence a Marilyn Manson lyric, the more you fear us, the stronger we get. You know, it's a growth. Do you understand that? It's growing like a cancer, like a bunch of computers that are all linked together for super processing. They see no limits. They want new formulas, new calculations, new colors, new sounds, you know? They break your will until eventually you just give yourself to this cancer consciousness so it can absorb you for itself. That's why people that try to do everything right here cannot. But they're conned into thinking this is normal here. And that's what Satan doesn't want you to know. That's what demons don't want you to know. They want you concerned about the future. And they're strategizing against this because they know this knowledge is going to get out. So Satan will try to get you to abandon the mind altogether. Why? Because there is truth in the fraudulent nature of your ego. So it knows that, it knows that truth will come out, so it has to amplify that and exaggerate it beyond usefulness. Get rid of the whole mind! Become a robot! <laughs> Those been taken over by cancer see the world as math. Random calculation of possibility. And it can snowball based upon pain and pleasure. Comedy is the number one vector for mind control because it puts you in a pleasurable state and you're focused on the joke and therefore they can slip in so many messages and you'll associate their messages with pleasure. Every truth that is true, they make fun of it as if it's corny and stupid and, uh, you know, that's the whole intent of that. You see it as comedy, expression of a comedian to get some laughs because you don't know how over your head these movie producers are and what is controlling them. If you want to call it Satan, Samiramis, Isis, the serpent, it doesn't matter. And it recruits them and tells them how much it loves them. Do you understand that evil is going to come in the name of love? You think it's stupid? It's going to come in the name of hate? No! The number one thing that evil will push on you is love and how much it loves you. Just like the guy trying to get sex in a bar, telling the girl how much he loves her and how he'll respect her in the morning. Satan plagiarizes to recruit, to entice, to seduce. It plagiarizes the creator. Just love me. Do whatever you want. Just love me. And I'll love you back. Satan coordinates this bullshit New Age movement to get people to dissociate. It's no different than getting drunk. Don't talk to me so firmly. You're putting me on a negative vibration. What? It's detachment from your normal instinct to try to help everybody in this realm. You become concerned with your own bliss. Therefore, you don't speak out against it unless you're speaking out to get other people to detach. 
Lilith, right? All the different names for the serpent. There is a difference between using psychic manipulation to enhance your feeling of pleasure, the tingly sensation that it uses, that Satan uses, and true love. And the irony is this. A lot of these people that are worshipping Satan with whatever name they choose, with whatever form Satan is using to seduce them, when they feel love, that's the love of God. But because you can't discern that with all of this confusion here, Satan just takes credit for that. Yes, that was my love. Satan is like a cancer. Therefore, it has scalar growth and it will see itself as one thing. So, when it seduces and entices and recruits, its reasoning will be very, very close to the reasoning that Christ would have. We are one. I am you, you are me. Very similar to creation in that. Yet, it will have the cancer agenda, right? Hurt other people, that's fine. Just love me. That is the difference. Cancer wants you to do whatever you want to that which is not its creation. To destroy it, as long as your allegiance is to the cancer. And once it sucks you in, you're its slave. Whether you know it in your current role or not, it knows. So it can be very confusing because it will make a lot of sense. It will mirror a lot of the laws of creation, except for the love and respect for all of the creations. That will be the difference. Greed, materialism, there are two oneness campaigns going on simultaneously. One of them is the recruiting by the cancer. We are one. Do you understand that? We're one consciousness. And that is the phenomenon of the all-seeing eye or the hive mind. Satan can speak through anybody at any time that it's connected to. The problem is the majority of these used car salesmen everybody calls priests with this black and white <clears throat> you know the dark side of the yin, the yin yang as these burning incense all of these things you're warned about in the bible to understand that they are practicing occult satanism whether they know it or not some of them were probably indoctrinated into catholicism others were indoctrinated into satanism and are posing as catholic priests either way they're recruiting and manipulating people with it and if somebody does know about the occult side of it they're not going to tell you anyway so you have to know the truth in order to be able to see this these people aren't qualified to teach you about spirit any more than somebody's qualified to teach you how to ride a bike who's only read a book about riding a bike and a fraudulent one at that and has never ridden one themselves they're not qualified Catholicism is pure Satanism. The problem is you shouldn't need to be told that. You should be able to see that. Priests that come out and need their audience and admiration in their temple. Why does God need a temple, a building? What? It means nothing. But they get off on that because everybody gives the priest their love. They don't give anything back. They just absorb the love, which is what a lot of spiritual, quote, gurus do. They absorb your energy through admiration what they're doing let me ask you something did christ feel like he needed to wear a specific outfit in order to be credible oh that's right no he didn't what book was this man regurgitating from oh that's right no book they're giving it a name and a procedure and a ritual what name did he give it oh that's right no name do you realize that a lot of the truth that is used about creation, life, the elements of reality, a lot of that used to solicit them into that religion is also the teachings of Christ. How ironic that they draw upon the teachings of Christ to turn those against Christ. These people have a history of pointing their fingers at themselves. They did it when they switched from dictatorship to hidden hand. They're doing it now. It could very well be that these religions were designed, their very purpose, thinking this many moves ahead, designed to fail. How? Why? Well, if they steal the teachings of Christ, then point their fingers at themselves like they always do, expose the Babylonian symbolism, the satanic symbolism of the religions they created, they could do that in hopes to make you abandon all Christ's teachings as well, do you see? If you don't know that they stole those teachings, then you'll think that they created those teachings. They expose the deity as symbolism, and then everybody will have their big sigh of relief. Oh, we don't have to be good. We don't have to follow any of that. You see, 
the ultimate last ditch attempt to discredit Christ. Why? That opens the door for the new world religion of sorcery or Satanism. It has to be that because there's no way these people doing what they're doing could have given the metaphors that Christ gave to create some symbolic deity. They just the two wouldn't go hand in hand. It really, the from what I've been learning, what I've seen, they stole his teachings to draw people into both Christianity and Satanism. Then they're going to point the finger at the symbolism of Christianity and other religions so that people release all of the teachings of Christ, thinking it was a fraud, for the final entrapment. The more that I'm taught, the more that I'm learning, the more I understand what Christ was saying. I mean, from the ground up, I may say it differently, but I understand it. There are a lot of people that are like, yeah, I understand it too. That's not what I mean. I mean, I truly understand it. So, one thing I know is that somebody at some time knew what I'm learning better than I know it. And you can only know that when you know it. And how do I know this person was connected to creation? Well, from what I'm learning. Somebody knew the correct way to perceive this reality, what it was, and how to handle it, how to overcome it. I know the Illuminati didn't come up with a lot of those parables. They couldn't have, because if they could, meaning they had the understanding, the knowledge that builds the foundation reaching the conclusion in these parables, if they knew that, they wouldn't be doing what they're doing right now. Let me say that again. If these people that created religion knew and understood the meaning behind those parables, they would not be doing what they're doing right now. Therefore, I know that somebody knew outside of this control system. So, by deduction, based upon what I know, the man existed. I can only infer that they stole the teachings of this man to sell this pagan worship of Satan. Why did he keep his mouth shut when they questioned him? A, they didn't want to know the truth, and B, they weren't going to give him two weeks to try to lead him to the truth. Therefore, he couldn't answer the questions. He just kept his mouth shut. And he knew they were all under demonic mind control. Forgive them. They know not what they do. Why do you think you didn't know what you were doing? I sold my soul to the devil. I know it's a That's how I got introduced to the music industry. I swear I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music, yeah. <laughs> but it didn't work out, and so I sold my soul to the devil. Why do you still do it? Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. You know, I made a bargain with it, holding up my hand. What was your bargain? To get where I am now. Should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and on this earth and in, uh, and then in the world we can't see. The invention of television has made it possible for us to communicate through a combination of sights and sounds. Modern means of communication have overcome the ancient barriers of time and distance. In which is visible a whole new era of communication. In one generation, voice and vision have transcended space. Science, engineering, and organization have harnessed the ratio between light and sound. Do you suffer because your storehouse of words is smaller than you'd like it to be? Well then, hey, hey, don't touch that channel selector. Well then, kids, you don't have to... Hey, I told you not to touch the selector. This is all for you. 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 Psychological warfare has been waged against America for much of this century. This war for the mind of the public has been facilitated by the emergence of mass media and the transformation of American education by behavioral psychologists. In the book 1984, George Orwell warned that people were in danger of losing their human qualities and freedom of mind without being aware of it while it was happening because of psychological, emotional, and intellectual manipulation. Mind control. Mind control in America. 
The most effective way to protect yourself from subconscious manipulation is by being aware of how it works. What the conscious mind believes, the subconscious acts on. It works like programming a computer. Information is fed into a computer, and the computer acts on it. However, if the information fed into the computer is wrong, it still acts on it. If a person believes something that is not true, the memory banks of the subconscious mind do not correct the error, but act on it. The theory of cognitive dissonance holds that the mind automatically and involuntarily rejects information not in line with previously accepted thoughts and beliefs. Watching television often produces an altered state of consciousness. Though not consciously perceived, the television screen, while appearing static, actually flickers. Any repeating light or sound pattern can lead you into an altered state. A hypnotist uses patterned speech by varying the pacing and inflection of his voice to induce the state of mind in his subject. It is in this state of mind where one is the most receptive to mental programming. Whether or not the information takes hold in the mind depends on two factors trust in the source of the information, and repetition of the message. Trust in the source of the information induces acceptance of the message as true, even if it is not understood. Repetition of the message embeds it in the subconscious so that acceptance of its truth and accuracy becomes a conditioned response. Thus, this information will be accepted as true without thinking about it whenever it is presented again. Get ready to read all these words on this page without making a mistake. Look at the letter at the end and remember the sound it makes. Get ready. Kite. Yes, kite. Get ready to read this word the fast way. Get ready. King. Yes, king. Sound it out. Get ready. King. Sound it out. Get ready. King. What word? King. Yes, kit. Boys and girls, sound this word out. Get ready. Steel. What word? Steel. Yes, steel. Read these words the fast way. Get ready. Play. play. Yes, play. Get ready. Must. Yes, must. Let's read these words the fast way without making a mistake. Get ready. Kite. Yes, kite. Get ready. Kick. Yes, kit. Get ready. Steal. Yes, steal. Get ready. Play. Yes, playing. Get ready. Must. Yes, must. Boys and girls, get ready. Kite. Yes, kite. Get ready. Kick. Yes, kit. Get ready. Steal. Yes, steal. Get ready. Play. Yes, playing. Get ready. Must. Yes, must. Boys and girls, keep the reader up. Americans are asking, why do they hate us? They hate what they see right here in this chamber, a democratically elected government. Their leaders are self-appointed. They hate our freedoms, our freedom of religion, our freedom of speech, our freedom to vote and assemble and disagree with each other. Either you're with us, either you love freedom and with nations which embrace freedom, or you're with the enemy. There's no in-between. You're either with us or you're with the enemy. That's, that's clear. I will continue to make that clear. an obligation to every last victim of this illegal aggression because all of this carnage has been done in our name. 
Since World War II, 90% of the casualties of war are unarmed civilians, a third of them children. Our victims have done nothing to us. From Palestine to Afghanistan to Iraq to Somalia to wherever our next target may be, their murders are not collateral damage. They are the nature of modern warfare. They don't hate us because of our freedoms. They hate us because every day we are funding and committing crimes against humanity. The so-called war on terror is a cover for our military aggression to gain control of the resources of Western Asia. This is sending the poor of this country to kill the poor of those Muslim countries. This is trading blood for oil. This is genocide. And to most of the world, we are the terrorists. In these times, remaining silent on our responsibility to the world and its future is criminal. And in light of our complicity in the supreme crimes against humanity in Iraq and Afghanistan and ongoing violations of the UN Charter and international law, how dare any American criticize the actions of legitimate resistance to illegal occupation? Our so-called enemies in Afghanistan, Iraq, Palestine, our other colonies around the world, and our inner cities here at home are struggling against the oppressive hand of empire, demanding respect for their humanity. They are labeled insurgents or terrorists for resisting rape and pillage by the white establishment, but they are our brothers and sisters in the struggle for justice. The civilians at the other end of our weapons don't have a choice, but American soldiers have choices. And while there may have been some doubt five years ago, today we know the truth. Our soldiers don't sacrifice for duty, honor, country. They sacrifice for Kellogg, Brown, and Root. They don't fight for America. They fight for their lives and their buddies beside them because we put them in a war zone. They're not defending our freedoms. They're laying the foundation for 14 permanent military bases to defend the freedoms of ExxonMobil and British Petroleum. They're not establishing democracy. They're establishing the basis for an economic occupation to continue after the military occupation has ended. Iraqi society today, thanks to American help, is defined by house raids, death squads, checkpoints, detentions, curfews, blood in the streets, and constant violence. We must dare to speak out in support of the Iraqi people who resist and endure the horrific existence we brought upon them through our bloodthirsty imperial crusade. We must dare to speak out in support of those American war resistors, the real military heroes who uphold their oath to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, including those terrorist cells in Washington, D.C., more commonly known as the legislative, executive, and judicial branches. Frederick Douglass said, those who profess to favor freedom and yet depreciate agitation, are people who want crops without plowing the ground. They want rain without thunder and lightning. They want the ocean without the roar of its many waters. The struggle may be a moral one, or it may be a physical one, or it may be both, but it must be a struggle. Power concedes nothing without a demand. It never has, and it never will. Every one of us, every one of us, just keep demanding, keep fighting, keep thundering, keep plowing, keep speaking, keep struggling until justice is served. No justice, no peace. No justice. Now, I also mentioned, too, that a fellow that, that uh, has been in touch with me for an awful long time, his brother was in the CIA, or is in the CIA. He will never talk about the CIA to him. He, I mean, he will never give anything away whatsoever, except one bit of advice. He said, never watch the television. Never watch the television. It's the greatest scientific indoctrination tool ever devised. Haven't you figured that out? It's changed the whole culture of nations, not just one nation. Why do you think it was mandatory that everybody in Britain give access to televisions by the government? Why do you think China is under the, the same program to get everyone to the TV right now? Because they love to have you entertained. Do you really think that? 
And India is on the same route as well right now too. Most of your ideas and your opinions and how you emulate, because you emulate things, you mimic what you see, as Charles Galton, Darwin and others have said in the past. It becomes you, you become it. And that's what's happened. It's been very, very, very successful. Never watch the television. You can't watch a movie unless you do it critically, if you watch it critically. Not there to enjoy it. Remember what they say, it's your emotions that get you on. And it's interwoven, all these emotional themes all through movies. You're played like a harp. And they embed ideas in you, into you, along with the movies. And predictive programming too. So you'll accept that which is still to come. And you'll, and you'll behave the same way as the characters in the movie when it comes. Oh well, what can you do? I'll just watch much music or television. today to meet the woman of my dreams. I've been talking to this girl on the internet for a while. I've actually been trying to save some money to go see this woman. Did you talk, talk to her online? I, I go to the library, believe it or not, to oh, okay. talk to this woman. I met her on MySpace, yeah. and I, she's a very beautiful woman. She's tall, skinny, she's redhead, very beautiful woman. Why don't we do it this way? Because you've, you, you've never met her never before. Never met her. Well, then I'm going to ask you to leave for a few moments, and we'll want to bring her out, let the audience meet her, and then we can both observe you two meeting with the Hey, Sam, let's bring him back now. Here's Brad. How you doing? It's so good to meet you. It's kind of nervous on national TV, I know, but, like, I wanted to ask, like, maybe, like, you know, you could be my girlfriend. Well, Brad, I have to tell you, I'm a man. I'll try anything once. So, in his book, From the Book, Behold a Pale Horse, written by William Cooper, a former naval intelligence officer, in regards to a document concerning the American public, it states, Diversion is the primary strategy. The simplest method for securing silent weapons and gaining it is to keep the public undisciplined and ignorant of basic system principles while keeping them confused. And this is what these reality shows are doing. Confused about gender, confused about political, confused, confused about um, your role. You understand what I'm saying? Confused about religion, confused about politics. It says keep them confused, disorganized, and distracted with matters of no real importance. Whereas the media, M-E-D-I-A, which stands for multi-ethnic destruction in America, or maniac European devils in action, keeps the adult population's attention diverted from real social issues and captivated by no matters of no real importance. It goes on to say, the schools are kept, keep the young public ignorant of real mathematics, real economics, real law, and real history. One of the things that uh, surprises a lot of people, and it shouldn't because it's publicly known, is that our education system is not about educating as much as it is about socializing. Like the duckling in the chicken yard. If you, if you take that duckling and raise it with the chickens, it's going to be imprinted, it's going to behave like the chickens. And in that very real sense, we perpetuate this. The danger is we don't just perpetuate it. We don't just enculturate it. But it's the only sane way we see to raise our children. And the result is there's no escaping it. C.S. Lewis said, when training, which is Skinner, have love, beats education, civilization dies. He always wears really cool outfits. It's always um, like it's always signing, and that's why we were doing this so we could be like Hannah Montana. Document put out 20 years ago um, by John, Dr. John Coleman, in the book The Story of the Committee of 300, number six, to encourage and eventually legalize the use of drugs and make pornography an art form. My question is. Does life imitate art, or does art imitate life? If you're going to make pornography an art form, and then make it an art form to whom? Your little baby.
babies, my little babies? How does that work? It was like a nightmare. I was down in Galveston two weeks ago on a vacation. The last day I was there, a convention of, of cheerleaders came, but it was little kids at a competition, and there were like 10-year-olds dressed like prostitutes everywhere, and they were being rude to my daughters because they thought they were there for the competition. And, I mean, I was it was freaking me out. In fact, we even came home a day early. I, I mean, the, people are training their daughters to be whores. Although education has proven to be highly effective in controlling human behavior, more intensive research would need to be conducted away from the prying eyes of the public. The Tavistock Institute was set up by the British Empire to really study mind control and to scientifically drill down into human behavior and put in textbook form systems of basic control so that could be duplicated out to government and corporate entities. And Tavistock has been involved at every level of social engineering. The Tavistock Clinic was founded in 1920 and operated as part of the Psychological Warfare Division of the British military. It was initially a voluntary outpatient clinic for treatment and research and was made up of general physicians, neurologists, and psychiatrists to facilitate the treatment of neurosis and shell-shocked British soldiers returning home from World War I. Going through their own publications on Amazon, you can find that some of their books cost like eighteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. And that, what that tells me is they don't want the average person to be anywhere near getting their hands on this book because what it gives you inside those books is the teacher's edition to use an abstraction as opposed to the, you know, the students sitting around the class not knowing what the answers to the questions are. There's a group of people who are being given the answers to all the questions about how we act, react, and how we've been understimulated with curiosity in, more, in, in order to make us more subordinative. Entertainment is kept below the sixth grade level. When you start hearing songs like Laffy Taffy and these kind of songs would hit your lower chakras and vibrate that negative energy, activating your pituitary gland, releasing those hormones. Now you've got grown-ass men making songs for 12- and 13-year-olds. I.E. Jay-Z. You understand what I'm saying? So the mm. public is kept busy working, and the result is no time to think. And that's exactly what they produced. And they wrote about it inside of a book called the Tavistock Institute of Human Relations, Shaping the Moral, Spiritual, Cultural, Political, and Economic Decline of the United States by John Coleman. Now, John Coleman is the gentleman that wrote the Committee 300. And the Committee 300 is that organ that decide what the trends are going to be in the black community. So when you start seeing people wearing mohawks and tight pants and acting wearing two earrings and acting like women, that was manufactured and put among us. Sheets, brother. Sheets, brother. You understand what I'm saying? So we have to understand that. How they did it, they, put, they said they devised a system. Uh, the, and the aim of the 12 atonal system that they devised jointly by British intelligent operatives from Tavistock University or Tavistock Institute in England. They put these 12 tones among us, all right, and created this thing, um, punk rock and this other uncontrollable music. Look up uh, Operation Paperclip and it'll tell you all about it. But Ardorno was a system of music that could program the mass music culture capable of eroding the morals of its listeners until they decline to a point where they will totally be degraded by it. And that's what's going on today. The music is bringing us down to an animalistic level, to the point where we don't even care about the art form. We just want a paycheck. Yes, sir. So now it's cool for a Jim Jones to come out talking about na 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 and grown folks go for it. You understand what I'm saying? Mm, it's cool right. for the, these Catholic Come out with someone talking about, I'm stupid, you stupid, we stupid. Why does that appeal to grown men and grown women? Well, that's the thing. All, uh, you know, it's funny. You said all this stuff about rappers and stuff that I thought was pretty scary. Mm -hmm. and, and then it all started coming out in the news right after you said it right. about how it's a weird sex cult and Illuminati. Right, right. And exactly. now they're all bragging that's what they're in. Yeah, I, th I think now they're trying to make it... Um well, how you call you, you? You say it so much, it becomes less important. Everybody, they're acclimating. Oh, they're just throwing it out. There. It's a fad. Everybody needs to do this. Yeah, right. No, 
it's still dangerous and people are still losing their lives and losing their minds and ultimately losing their souls. I don't know why they're into this. Uh, reportedly, Lady Gaga, it's been confirmed by multiple friends and managers. Someone has to sleep in the room with her, and she's tortured by demons. Right. And, and, and thinks she's followed around by ghosts. Well, yeah, you're telling little girls to worship the devil. Bad right. stuff's going to happen to you. Exactly. <laughs> so they're admitting these things. These things are out there. People are just not taking it serious. This is actual demon possession. And they're going through rituals in front of millions of people in front of our Tony friends. Blair admitted that he falls to the ground every morning and is possessed by the angel of light. This is mainstream news. Mm. And he said, yeah, what's the big deal? And flops around on the ground. The devils call the angel of light. I mean, mm. you can't make this up. No, definitely can't. Joe, Joe Bacon, uh put out a DVD called The Corporation. He said to children, as tomorrow's consumers represent a huge market today, and therefore a fair game. You understand what I'm saying? So they are attacking the children using tones and frequencies. Mm. And parents want to see their children happy. We go out and use our credit cards and our hard-earned dollars to make sure our children are happy. So we get the sneakers and the new sneakers and the new video games and the new songs that come out and this kind of thing. Thinking that we're making our children happy, we're feeding our children's minds and souls to the wolves.
if you don't submit um, to control, if you're a, a radical, you're less likely to be loved. Um, you're not fitting in with society. Um, you're viewed as an outsider. Um, there, so there's a lot of um, uh, social prohibitions about the outsider and the, and the person who's going to upset things. From the time we're very young, we're taught to you know, worship authority, basically, because that's our key to survival as young children. But as adults, we never go through the rites of passage that tell us how to methodically think for ourselves, and thus we're always in a state of extended adolescence. Well, we take all this stuff, whether it's the television or it's the enculturation, the, the schoolyards, the teachers, we take this whole system, we put it into our unconscious mind. And it is the G-I-G-O that comes out, garbage in, garbage out. We simply, in that computer language, have harnessed our own power by accepting all these beliefs as though they are factual. Whether it's the flat earth of uh, Columbus, or it's the idea that I'm not good enough to be or to do something I've dreamed to do. To the degree that the individual loses a sense of what freedom really means for himself, mind control is working. This is the constant battle and the struggle. What does my freedom mean to me? What is it? How deep does it go? How far? I sat on a council of 13 people that take orders only from the Rothschild Tribunal in London, which they claim they take their orders directly from Lucifer. I was the manager of Zodiac Productions, which Zodiac Productions' its name's been changed since then. I'm not even sure what they call it now, but it's the largest music conglomerate in the world. It owns RCA Records, Columbia Records, Motown Records, it owns almost all the concert booking agencies in the United States. And that's not even the the name of the company that owns it. The name of the company that owns it is Brenner Enterprises, and Brenner Enterprises is owned by Chase Manhattan. Chase Manhattan's owned by Standard Oil, and Standard Oil's owned by the Lords of London. You can track it on back. You kind of get the idea after a while. But I was the managing president of Zodiac Productions. It's one of my jobs as being one of these 13 people. Thus, I got to know many of the people who produce music and sing the music and play the music that you play. Now, one of the closest friends that I got during that time that I obtained was a man named David Crosby, Crosby Still Nash and Young. I saw David the day before Christmas last year, talked with him. I got him away from this witch that he had with him. He told her to go shopping. We were in West Hollywood, and I was witnessing around to people I knew. We went off in this store, and we started talking. I said, David, I'd like to ask you a couple questions. I said, I already know the answers, but I've been gone for five years. I'd like to know if certain things are still the way they were when I left. I said, do they, now I'll have to explain some of this when I'm done, because you're not going to understand it all unless you know something about music. I said, do they still take the master to the temple room? Dave said, yeah. I said, do they still have the coven conjure demons into the master? He said, of course. I said, now, i got to know something. What's the main reason for rock music? He said, come on, Lance, you know what the reason is. I said, please, David, I don't want to guess. Tell me what the main reason is. He said, the same as when you were in, so that we can play spells on people that we couldn't cast spells upon. I'll explain what that means in a minute. I said, okay, one last thing. I've been hearing that you must be an initiated witch now to get a record contract. He said, that's right. He said, many of us that weren't total witches have to be witches now in order to produce music. I said, thank you. The master is a tape about as big as the top of this podium that looks like an overgrown eight track that the album is cut on and it's placed in a machine that produces and presses the records and the 8-tracks and cassettes that you buy. After it's been recorded, it's taken in. This is why a master's cut months in advance before it's released. On the full moon, it's taken in to a temple room about the size of this auditorium that is in every one of the major music companies behind locked doors up in the executive offices. And it's placed on an altar sitting in the north of the room and a pentagram engraved in the floor. And 13 hand-chosen witches and witch wizards and a coven come in 
and conjure a principality or a power up, usually Regia or something like that, and order him to tell the demons under him to follow every record and every tape coming off of that master. I sold my soul to the devil. I know it's a crappy deal. This it came with a few toys like a happy meal. You know what was going on in my life at 15 and that's how I got introduced to the music industry. I swear I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music. Yeah. <laughs> but it didn't work out and so I sold my soul to the devil. Because you're hot. Uh, how it came about being a lyricist is, is weird because I started out technically, like I used to write all the time, you know, before I started uh, going into the Rain Man thing, you know. Why do you still do it? Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. I, mean, I made a bargain with it, you know, a long time ago and I'm holding up my hand. What was your bargain? To get where um, I am now. Should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and on this earth and in, uh, and then in a world we can't see. Yeah, well, sometimes they don't want to and they're, you know, gaga, we can't get, you know, the, the frequency's weird and, you know, it's sounding a little bit strange. And I'm like, if you don't get this right now, I swear to Lucifer, I'm gonna, you know, I get a little bit mad. And I'm like, if you don't get this right now, I swear to Lucifer, I'm gonna. What's this done to your career? What's it, what has it done to what my career? What has it done to your career? In what way? Uh, how has it impacted uh, you? Know, my touring, album, record my sale. album is number one all over the world. All over the world. America's the only one because I don't, I don't want to say too much. But it's not number one in the United States. It's conspiracy, yeah. I don't want to say too much. I'm done. I don't want to say much because I'm hurting. I'm really hurting. I had to ask some friends because I was hearing a lot about her, and so they told me, you know, who she was and what she was doing. And I come from the school of thought. There's just there's just some things that the that the that the public just shouldn't know. You know what I'm saying? Like things that happen between two people, a wife and a husband, girl. Uh, I just don't think that it's for mass consumption. I just have always felt that way, and I just think that. The whole idea of celebrity and fame has become really convoluted and, you know, kind of bastardized. Like, whereas fame used to be the byproduct of success, and now it's the ultimate goal. And you, if, you're, if your ultimate goal is to be famous, then you're going to do a lot to, do, to get there. Like, sign your name in blood in a contract with the devil. Like, you're going to end up in a, on a one-way street, and it's going nowhere. Like, that's just the truth. I've seen, I've seen so many people, like forsake their 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 moral code and their value systems just for a little bit of fame and it's it's not worth it at the end of the day it's really not worth it Vaughn Lawrence is a guy that showed everybody you can make it from DC to Hollywood and uh, I had a personal stake in his success every time he did something it made me feel inspired and really good and he was always real nice to me he'd sit me down what's going on with you baby boy what what talk about comedy whatever and, uh, you know, when we did Blue Streak, we were promoting it, you know, and Martin had a stroke. He almost died. And then after that, I saw him, and I was like, oh, my God, Martin, are you okay? And he said, I got the best sleep I ever got in my life. <laughs> That's how tough he is. So let me ask you this. What is happening in Hollywood that a guy that tough will be on the street waving a gun, screaming, they are trying to kill me. Yeah. What's going on? Why is Dave Chappelle going to Africa? Why does Mariah Carey make a $100 million deal and take clothes off on TRL? It, a weak person cannot get to sit here and talk to you. Ain't no weak people talking to you. So what is happening in Hollywood? Nobody knows. The worst thing to call somebody is crazy, is dismissive. I don't understand this person, so they're crazy. That's bullshit. These people are not crazy. They're strong people. Maybe the environment is a little sick.
some of us are against the Illuminati, and we are against the Illuminati at our own detriment. Mm. When people are against the Illuminati, then they get punched in the face all the time. The press hates them, and nobody likes them. End quote. I mean, we all love Dave Chappelle. Exactly. Dave Chappelle has never been a part of the Illuminati. They don't want him or me or people like us. Yeah. Um, but now it's not uh, necessary for us to store up that hornet's nest unless we intend to get stung a million times. I didn't understand that. They had to sting me a million times. Right. I'm still not going to join, but I respect it a little more. All right. uh, you're managed by the company. Uh, and this surprised me. I only found this out. You're managed by the company. You look after S Club 7. You used to look after the, the, the Spice Girls, Simon Fuller. Uh, have they tried to, to mould you in any way, though, if people ask you to do things to change the way you look or speak or behave? Um, yeah, one of them tried to mould me into a big triangle shape. And I went, no. No, you know, I've got my own style. Would you like me to show them how the sign of the curse works? Sign Completely of the curse? different. How does it go? No, not at you, not at you people out there in the audience, but this is the difference. Aim it toward Red China, would you? <laughs> this is the sign of the horns. A curse sign, the two fingers extended. This way, spread apart for sort of shotgun blast, you know, all over. Gentile, black man, white. We all want to help one another. Human beings are like that. We want to live by each other's happiness, not by each other's misery. We don't want to hate and despise one another. In this world, there's room for everyone, and the good earth is rich and can provide for everyone. The way of life can be free and beautiful, but we have lost the way. Greed has poisoned men's souls, has barricaded the world with hate, has goose-stepped us into misery and bloodshed. We have developed speed, but we have shut ourselves in. Machinery that gives abundance has left us in want. Our knowledge has made us cynical, our cleverness hard and unkind. We think too much and feel too little. More than machinery, we need humanity. More than cleverness, we need kindness and gentleness. Without these qualities, life will be violent, and all will be lost. The aeroplane and the radio have brought us closer together. The very nature of these inventions cries out for the goodness in men, cries out for universal brotherhood, for the unity of us all. Even now, my voice is reaching millions throughout the world, millions of despairing men, women, and little children, victims of a system that makes men torture and imprison innocent people. To those who can hear me, I say, do not despair. The misery that is now upon us is but the passing of greed, the bitterness of men who fear the way of human progress. The hate of men will pass, and dictators die. And the power they took from the people will return to the people. And so long as men die, liberty will never perish. Soldiers, don't give yourselves to brutes. Men who despise you, enslave you, who regiment your lives, 
tell you what to do, what to think and what to feel, who drill you, diet you, treat you like cattle, use you as cannon fodder. Don't give yourselves to these unnatural men, machine men with machine minds and machine hearts. You are not machines. You are not cattle. You are men. You have the love of humanity in your hearts. You don't hate. Only the unloved hate. The unloved and the unnatural. Soldiers, don't fight for slavery. Fight for liberty. In the 17th chapter of St. Luke, it is written, the kingdom of God is within man. Not one man, nor a group of men, but in all men, in you. You, the people, have the power. The power to create machines. The power to create happiness. You, the people, have the power to make this life free and beautiful. To make this life a wonderful adventure. Then in the name of democracy, let us use that power. Let us all unite. Let us fight for a new world, a decent world that will give men a chance to work, that will give youth a future and old age a security. By the promise of these things, brutes have risen to power, but they lie. They do not fulfill that promise. They never will. Dictators free themselves, but they enslave the people. Now let us fight to fulfill that promise. Let us fight to free the world, to do away with national barriers, to do away with greed, with hate and intolerance. Let us fight for a world of reason. A world where science and progress will lead to all men's happiness. Soldiers, in the name of democracy, let us all unite!